Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Dean Samid, I'm a pro horror artist from the UK and you're tuned in to photomanipulation.com. In this video walkthrough, I'll be showing you how to create realistic shadows in Photoshop with three different approaches and some mistakes to avoid. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel, we specialize in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out five videos a week. Let's roll the video, enjoy. Okay, so for the first technique today, I'm going to show you the shadow technique in Photoshop that I use most often. And that technique is for shadows cast by objects in more close-up scenes in portraits or character design anything along those lines so i have the demo piece here which is the cyber girl piece that i created for a prior tutorial and what i'd like to demonstrate is the shadow cast by this visor here so i'm just going to track down through the layer stack and locate the visor so there's a group there i'm going to hide to that group and show that group again and on this visor you'll see that there's a shadow so I'm just going to hide and show the shadow and then explain exactly how that shadow was created. Now, the shape of this visor, I would like to cast down the shadow region. So what I'm going to do is hold down command and click on the layer thumbnail icon. And with that selection in place, I'm going to go underneath the layer stack or I'll do it above so we can see what's going on. I'm going to click on the levels adjustment layer. And I'm going to grab the white output slider and I'm going to drag that to the left. And you'll see that this will have, you can see it on the visor there, it's getting progressively darker. So I'm going to move that to about the midpoint there. And then click back on the layer stack. Now I'm going to move this levels adjustment layer underneath the visor because that's where the shadow will be cast. And with the move tool selected, that's V um, on the keypad I'm going to nudge down using the down arrow key and there you can see the shadow moving down now you'll notice at this point that the shadow itself is very crisp and very unrealistic so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go a step further we'll go filter blur Gaussian blur there is a shortcut for this but for the purpose of the demo we'll just go the old-school way and on the value on this i'm going to take it down to a radius we just want it to dissipate a touch more so it's less sharp and unrealistic we'll go to about 17. we'll hit okay on that and we'll change the layer blend mode to multiply to see how that looks sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it's on a case by case situation I would say normal blend mode is fine and what I'll do is I'll, because it's an adjustment layer we can go back in and tweak the values until it looks about right. I'd say there is okay and once more I'll just nudge it up just to get the positioning right. And there you can see the shadow cast by the visor and that was created using a levels adjustment layer. Now a mistake that many people make is that they'll manually create so I'll, I'll I'll show you the process a newbie normally goes through. They think, right, I've got the visor there. I want it to look realistic. I'll get a soft edge brush set to black and I'll just paint in a black shadow. Now then, the problem with this is that blacks will make the color value underneath go quite murky and soupy and distort the color information and it's not really advisable to use pure blacks in artwork at all for that very reason there is an alternative thing that you can do in a similar way i'm going to create a new layer shift command and n and remember windows users anytime i say command just replace that with control i'm going to i've got the brush selected i'm going to hold down alt and i'm going to click a dark region and here on the color picker you can see that it's picked a, a, a very dark skin tone, quite brown. I'm gonna take that down a notch. And then with the same principle as before, I'm gonna change this blend mode to multiply. 
and I'm going to paint that in. And you'll already notice how much better than the black that is. So you don't always have to use levels. You can use um, a soft edge brush with a tone sampled from the image itself. And that shadow there will look a lot better than a black any day of the week. So that's creating shadows cast by objects. The next step that I wanted to show you, um, another tip for creating shadows, realistic shadows in Photoshop, is a process that I like to call stealing shadows. So I'm going to use this example piece here. This is an image that we shot in the studio. It's part of our historical and fantasy stock bundle. And this is one of our models, Liepa. Now the original image was a studio shot image like this. Anytime that you have a figure stock model on a white background, you can steal the shadows instantly. So this version here is a version that I cut out previously, composited, and this version here is the original. I'm going to create a duplicate of the original by going Command J, and then I'm going to set that layer blend mode to multiply and there you can see the let's just change that back to normal the whites have been knocked out and the darks remain that's what happens when you use the multiply blend mode okay i'm going to click the original there and you can see there's a problem here on this shadow layer that we've changed to multiply there there's still lots of darks and you see the sticker on the floor for our positioning you can instantly deal with that by going Command and L to activate Levels command directly onto the layer. So this is not non-destructive. This is applied directly to the layer. But because we created a duplicate, that's okay. doesn't matter if we mess this up. So I'm just going to beef up the shadows a notch with the black slider. And then with the white slider, I'm going to pull that over to the left. And there you can see these edges around here, it will get rid of those tonal values. So let's bring that to about there. We'll go OK. Add a layer mask to that. Hit B, good old classic soft edge brush. I hit X to switch the colors. And I'm using the square bracket keys to change the size. So let's just get the edge of this. And then we'll get rid of that small sticker on the floor. We don't need that. And we have an instant realistic shadow that uses the information that was already there within the scene. Now, of course, this only works with clean studio lit photography, but most of us these days are using Adobe Stock or Micro Stock websites, even our own site, Neo Stock. A lot of the models are shot on plain backgrounds, which allows us to do this. So it's actually quite a useful technique. There was another one that I wanted to show you, Liepa Medieval, one that we've done previously exactly the same premise that's the composited image this one here is the multiply and if i change that to normal you can see that the levels have been done to that the whites are extremely white and i'll just bump that back to multiply and there you can see very realistic native shadows stolen for your composite work so that's tip number two for today the last tip a little bit of a bonus tip is we actually go against what was said before so you know i mentioned that using blacks in composites isn't a great idea but this is actually an example of a situation where you can get away with it so this is an angel uh kind of character design i've done for a previous book cover project and on this one i'm going to demonstrate how you can create a cast shadow with a light source behind so i'm just gonna use a shape tool here and create a, a white ellipse let's just say about there move that in position and just for demo purposes this isn't going to be perfect or anything just showing you the key concept so if we had a light source there let's just gauche and blur that a bit we'll get some gradient banding but like i said this is just a demo okay normally what you do is you tweak the lighting on this foreground figure to match the light source coming from the back. I'm just gonna do something really basic. I've added a selection to the angel. 
I always like to expand the selection by one um, just so it's not right on the edge and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create um, a shadow at the bottom of the legs so let's just go from the top here I'm going to go this isn't the tip by the way I'm just preparing the stock image I'm going to pull the output levels down to there get some shadow on the layer mask command and I invert to black create a selection of the stock figure and then with the soft edge brush set to white I'm going to paint onto the layer mask and selectively apply that shadow to the bottom of the feet and this is pretty much the tip that I showed you for tip number two and there you have the dark region on the bottom of the legs now with that prep done the light source and the shadow at the bottom of the legs what we're going to do is we're going to do the actual shadow tip now and this is a cast shadow so I've got a duplicate of the angel layer there and I'm gonna go command and L directly onto the layer this is a levels command and I'm gonna pull the white output slider right down to the left and there you can see we have a solid black duplicate of this foreground figure now I mentioned before it's not good to use pure blacks but if the shadow is being cast on the floor or on the environment you can get away with it better than if it's on something close up like a, a, a character face or a figure or something like that so what I'm gonna do here is go command T to get free transform and for this what you need to do is zoom out quite a lot because what we're going to be grabbing this anchor point here and this anchor point here and stretching it out to give a perspective effect so I'm going to right click on the free transform I'm going to go distort zoom out a couple this one is going to go to about there this one is going to go to about there we'll zoom in in a minute just to make sure everything's in place so let's get this perspective nice and wide and um, we'll zoom in just to make sure everything's in place now we want these feet to match up so I'm just gonna pull that upwards and get it so that bottom foot we're going to move this shadow behind the figure and that's about right I'm gonna nudge to the left with the arrow key hit enter so there we have our cast shadow so this shadow here although it looks quite good right now isn't really realistic enough it's a bit too sharp so we're going to use one of the blur functions and for this we're going to be using iris blur now iris blur can be uh, a little bit processor intensive but we'll try our best with this one i'm just going to zoom out a couple using command and minus now the premise of this iris blur is that within the ellipse it will be the sharp region and then outside of the ellipse will be the blur that's determined by this value over here with the slider or alternatively you can use this um, small wheel function here to control the blur opacity and when I tweak the scale of the ellipse it will control where the sharpness occurs and where the dissipation drop-off occurs and this is perfect for the shadow because naturally a cast shadow like this would dissipate the further out it goes I believe the term is diffraction but you'd have to check up on that one so I'm just gonna move around this ellipse here to control the dissipation of the shadow I'm gonna bump up the blur value just a touch and then once that catches up with itself it should give the desired effect I'm just gonna go okay on that I think it will do for the purpose of the demo so that's looking good but we're not 100% there yet guys uh, the last thing that we need to do is just apply a small amount of blur because this wouldn't be as sharp in real life and to apply that we just do a bog standard Gaussian blur and it doesn't have to be too intense 192 is definitely too intense let's just try 4 3.5 3.5 and that will do it we'll give it a zoom out and we'll see how we're looking and there you go at any point you can reduce the opacity um, and there's one thing to keep in mind that with shadows cast like this not only do they get progressively 
blurrier as they um, stretch out they also reduce in opacity so a very simple way to enact that effect is to add a layer mask to that shadow layer we'll just pull that underneath the angel so that's looking correct and then what we're going to do is we're going to use a black and white gradient on the layer mask to have that dissipation occur so i've got um a black gradient there and you can look here at the top left where the gradient panel is and we're just gonna click and drag downwards that was okay i'm just gonna go command z on that maybe a bit more uh maybe a bit less and that's how you can dissipate uh reduce the opacity in a you know just pull the opacity down on that a bit more we'll take a look what i may do is just get a little bit of black at the bottom just a solid black i know i warned against it before but for a, a bit of darkness on the shoes it really doesn't matter so let's get a little bit of black here at the bottom of these shoes yeah we're looking good and there is our cast shadow so that's it for the free tips for creating shadows in photoshop guys we're putting out five videos like this every week so if you're finding this content useful please do give us a like and subscribe we're a brand new channel and we'll be happy with all the support we can get at this time i look forward to sharing lots more videos with you i appreciate you tuning in guys i'll see you at the next video catch you then